small puma. Aren't you? Aren't you? All right, and we're scooching. You know those days when you spend 45 minutes on your hair, but eventually it looks exactly how you want it to and it's cooperative for the rest of the day? No, me either. Ugh, can you not? Hey guys, what's up, it's Haley. Welcome back to my channel. Now, if you're wondering where I am, because I'm very clearly not at home, I am spending the month of May in California. You guys will know that if you watch my updates video and everything, or if you're just following me on social media. But that trip and transition is why I miss Monday's video. I'm really sorry, but I have a feeling you will forgive me because today I am filming one of the most highly requested that is not English. The most highly requested video. The video was requested a lot. So a couple months back, I made a video about my experiences growing up in a haunted house. I lived in a home when I was younger that I will forever believe was haunted. And ever since that video went up, you guys have been going crazy for more ghosty, scary stories. And today I'm going to be making a part two because freaky stuff has been happening in my apartment. Like my current apartment where I live, where I film. The apartment that you guys are at least somewhat familiar with, the one with the tapestry behind my bed and the Christmas lights, that is the apartment that we are talking about. I've tried to film this video twice in that apartment and there was just something about talking about the apartment in the apartment and I just, I couldn't do it. But I thought I would give it another go because I know it will make your spooky little days and I love you guys to the moon and back. And also, I'm states and states away and I know that when we get back from California we are moving so it should be fine. Basically, I have recently come to the conclusion that my apartment is haunted and yeah, it's haunted in a very different way than my haunted house was. There was something very wrong with that house. It felt bad, it felt scary. Everything that's going on in my apartment is very different and I will get into to that in a minute, but a little bit of backstory. We moved into this apartment about a year ago, exactly a year ago. Our lease is almost up. These apartments are new, nothing off the bat felt weird, nothing felt off, nothing felt bad. And I know I'm kind of kooky about this kind of stuff, but I'm super big on feelings and vibes and stuff like that. I'm really sensitive to energy and how places make you feel and how people make you feel. That's just what I'm big on. I know I'm insane. New apartment feels fine. Cool. About a week into living in this apartment, minor things started to happen. You run out of the middle bump in the night. Things started to move and not be where you left them and then show up in the most ridiculous places. Like I found my eyelash curler in the freezer one time and nobody knew how it got there. We would all hear doorknobs jiggling and doors opening and closing when we were home alone. One time I was in my room and my roommate was in his and I heard knocking on the wall that we shared and I had assumed that it was him trying to get my attention for some reason and so I went into his room and I asked him what he wanted and he hadn't done anything. David a couple times heard what sounded like people coming in and out of our roommate's room when nobody was there. Secured things would fall off of the wall and then random things would sound like they fell off the wall but nothing would be on the floor, nothing would be out of place. I think I caught that on tape one time because I was filming. Actually, I for sure did. I was filming an overcaffeinated art video. I will leave that clip in here. Anyways, the episode that I saw last night was... Oh my god. Hello? Do you guys hear that on the camera? Enough stuff like that started to happen that we would make jokes about having a ghost, we named Tim Craig. Everything was pretty playful, everything was pretty innocent. But there were two things that happened um, that kind of took it to another level. I know what it feels like to be haunted. Like, I know what it felt like to live in a haunted house, and I remember that darkness and that disgusting energy that was just kind of creeping into every corner. Like, I know what it feels like to be surrounded by negative energy, and I never felt that in this apartment. I never felt scared, I never felt threatened. Even when I started to feel like I wasn't alone, even when we kind of started to feel presences, I was never afraid, and I never felt like I needed to be. If all of these things were paranormal in nature, and I'm not just insane, I always imagined this energy as very playful, very innocent. Two things did happen in this apartment, though, that were just... No. So the first thing that happened, it didn't happen to me at first. It did later on, but at first it happened to our roommate's girlfriend. So our roommate's girlfriend stayed with us for a couple months. Very, very sweet girl. She was staying with us during a time of the year that the boys had to get up super, super early in the morning for football practice. I would wake up with them, I would drop them off, come back, get ready for class, and then I would go to school myself. That whole process was happening at some ungodly hour of the morning. And so she would usually be asleep until I got back home from class. On this particular day, I come home from dropping off the boys and I walk into the living room and she's sitting in there petrified like her eyes were watering she was huddled up in a corner she looked like she had seen a ghost basically what she said had happened was she had fallen back asleep after we had left because obviously we made enough noise to like rile her up a little bit and she was woken up by our front door opening and closing so loudly that someone who was completely asleep was awoken up 
English. At first she thought that maybe I had just gone and come really quickly or maybe we had forgotten something because this happened maybe five minutes after we had left and the school is about a 10 minute drive away from our apartment. She thought it was me so she was calling my name out into the living room and there was no response obviously because I wasn't there and she started to hear footsteps but she described them as if as if someone in heavy work boots was walking across our carpet. If you think about a heavy man wearing heavy metal work boots walking across our carpet, like there's a distinct sound, like there's a scuffing and she said it was really clear. She was up obviously losing her mind. She said the footsteps walked up to her door. She looked under the crack of her door and she said she saw the carpet dip down so she couldn't see any boots and she couldn't see any feet but she said she saw where the carpet like sagged a little bit if you have a heavy person in heavy shoes on like plush carpet it goes down a little bit like you can see the impression and that's what she saw and so she said she started to pretend to talk to her boyfriend who wasn't there just to kind of give the illusion that she wasn't home alone and she heard the footsteps walk away enough that she felt like she could go into the living room to get her phone and that's when I walked in so she's telling me all of this and my immediate thought is that one of the main people from our apartment complex because there are some guys that work there that will go into your house and fix things usually if they need to get into your house they'll tell you in advance or they'll call but my assumption was just that they saw us leave in the morning and maybe they assumed everybody was out of the house and there was something really urgent that needed to be taken care of and they were in there so we called the maintenance office and they had just opened because keep in mind it was still really really early in the morning they said that nobody from their office had been in any of the apartments within the past 12 hours so we we're like okay and we hung up so we kept talking and she got this look on her face she stopped in the middle of her sentence and she said I heard the door open and close when he came in and I didn't hear the door open or close after that she looks at me and she goes he's still here I have never in my life gotten into my car faster my hair was in pigtails I was in my pajamas I had not a drop of makeup on I run to my car she's right behind me we drive to school we sit in the parking lot for like an hour waiting for my class she sits in on it with me then we go back and when we walk in the front door like I said things have been moved but never like this. We walked into the living room and immediately, like we could tell something was not right. So first of all, because we're messy college students, our couch was covered with shit. Like we had our mail on there, we had laundry, we had unpacked groceries, like the, our couch was covered. And we walk in and everything that was on our couch was now on our floor. I'm already obviously losing my mind, but then I see something and this was what made me like go to paranormal. Before that, even though I've gone through what I've gone through as far as spirits go, it's just, it's not something that my mind jumps to right away. Like there's so many other possible things that could be an explanation for what was happening. And this is just, this is where I was like, no. So hold on, rewind. When she was telling me what was happening, I was on my laptop looking for the number for the maintenance people because I had to like log into my email to find it. And my laptop was on the floor and I left it on the floor because I don't take care of my things. It was shut though when we left and now my laptop was open, upside down, and balanced in a triangle in the middle of the living room. First of, first of all, if you are going to take the risk of breaking the law and breaking into someone's house to steal things, you are not going to walk by the sole valuable item in the apartment. It makes no sense. Had somebody been in our house, my laptop would be gone because you're not just going to walk by that. Much less take the time to open it and make it all weird in the middle of my living room. Like it just made no sense. And at that point I was freaking out. She and I left again and we didn't come back home until the boys were at the apartment with us because we just couldn't deal. So the second thing happened much more recently. All of that took place closer to Christmas time. This happened less than a month ago. So my aunt came to visit and this was after our roommate had moved out. So our roommate moved out a couple months back and so we've just been using his room as a guest room when we have people over. My aunt came down for one of her shows. So she did her show and she stayed with us the night of and the night after. The day she was leaving we both got up early. We had breakfast together and then she left and I was home alone because of course I was. She leaves and I take my laptop into the guest room because I needed to edit and do some emails and I just didn't want to deal with the mess that was my room at the time. I say at the time as if it's clean now. My room was just too messy to even think in so I went into the guest room and I took my laptop and I remember distinctly noticing that she had made the bed and I thought it was really cute because she made it adorably like she tucked the blankets under the mattress, she tucked everything up nice and I texted her about how sweet it was that she made the bed and how cute I thought it looked and this this and that. Point being the bed was made. So I'm laying down on the bed on top of the covers and I'm just doing my emails, I'm editing a video, I take a break for whatever reason and I take my laptop with me into the bathroom, I set it up and I watch a movie while I'm in the bath. I get out of 
the bath and I go into my room to get changed. I take my laptop from my room into the guest room and I literally almost dropped my MacBook Pro. Like I caught it at the last second because I was so terrified. What I saw scared me so much. I walk into the guest room and remember when I said she had tucked the covers underneath the mattress? The bed was unmade, but not like somebody had taken all the blankets and just like jumbled them up and dropped them down on the mattress. It literally looked like somebody had peeled back the covers, gotten into bed, rolled around, and gotten out. And it was just so disturbing. I'm getting like hot. It was so creepy. And again, I got into my car and I drove to Davis practice and I just waited in the parking lot for him to be done because I was not going to sit there by myself alone. Anyways, I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed this video. I'm really sorry if my energy wasn't a hundred percent. I get nervous when I make story time videos about anything, much less about ghosts living in my apartment. And I sometimes feel like I can come off a bit boring. So I'm sorry if I did, but those stories are a hundred percent true. If you guys did enjoy this video, let me know down below in the comments because I have so many other ghosts stories between the time that I lived in that haunted house and the time that ghosts apparently moved into my apartment. So let me know down below if you guys want to see a part three and I will make that happen. Also, please just have a tiny bit of patience with me throughout this month. It is going to be really hard to get as many videos up as I would like to. I will still try, I promise, but just have a little patience as far as regular uploads go. I will do much better about being active on social media. I know I've been kind of lacking as far as that goes, but with all of that said, I love you all to the moon and back. Make sure to be following me on all my social media, which is linked down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.